toe, let's put your other foot out as well. Thank you. If we were doing a nail bed for the great toe, we would do exactly what we've done this whole time. We would take it off and we would go around the nail bed, okay? Because the great toe has substance to get around. All the other toes do not. So what you could do for the other toes is instead of cutting into your foam, you just cut a piece off <coughs> that is the length that you need. And for her toe, it was even a little long. It would be like that. So what I would do is spray. Now, the spray gets a little crazy when we're dealing with this skinny little toe. So we've also got um, Q-tips, cotton swabs. You could spray the swab and then paint the QDA on to the toe instead of kind of doing a blanket spray because you're going to get their toes totally saturated. So you could spray your cotton swab and paint on until you thought it was thick enough, okay? Once that is on, you could take your little, what we'll call a bumper now, and you'll stick it at the end, okay? What you could also layer in, which your slide doesn't show this, is you could layer a bumper here. Because depending if the nail bed is damaged, it's, it's the entire bed of the nail. And so now from the top of the shoe, the shoe's gonna hit the bumper on top, and the shoe's gonna hit this bumper coming this way, okay? So instead of it touching the nail bed at all, then from here, you would layer in, you would definitely wanna use second skin if you have it. I'm gonna create a little piece. And then you would layer your gauze So there's your protection of your second skin. You would layer a small piece of gauze. Again, you can kind of see the shape you're creating. So, and this is a double thick, so I'm just gonna peel that away. And then from there, you would do a hat, a hat, wrap around. Now that the toe's really skinny here, you probably could use one of these and I bet you would get around. So this is kind of where Sean was saying that kind of less is more. You could probably with this toe get around one time. Now, either she needs to help you spread or she needs to help Ben to get down here to help pull these apart, okay? So then that will free you up so that you're not fumbling so much, okay? So again, it's a hat, a hat, wrap, and then a hat again on both angles. Let's just make a couple hats here. And remember, the toe is not very long in this situation so you know this is overkill if it's a hat right <coughs> if their problem is that their toe box in their shoe is too small uh-huh like how is this gonna mm, oh toe box feel? issues are problematic that's where sometimes what I do is cut the shoes I've gone in and I have cut shoes open before. So, so just like cut a hole. In so shoe depending then. on, because if you think like the shoe, there's there's laces somewhere in here, right, with all the eyelets. So there's two things. You could cut open an eyelet. You could slice it and open it so it's a little thicker, so it gives. Or what you could do is you could skip eyelets. So Sweet. one of the eyelets here, down here, you would skip so then it doesn't pull as tight. So you have ways to maneuver the shoe. Um, yeah, I've had to do that on occasion. So 
So then here we're going to just, you're going to see how we're going to like manipulate all around her toe. And I'm going to try to get enough thickness. And then just again, that concept of constantly layering and overlapping the pieces, pulling with enough stretch that you don't get stuck with a lot of the dog ears, but not so much that you're compressing um, their tissue. And then from there, you would finish with another little hat and another little hat. And look there, I got around with one. And then you would lube this toe against this and lube here against that. And then you just make sure we're good, okay? Okay, awesome.